hey youtube welcome back to my channel today i will be doing a freestyle set for you guys this is still week four of me being at school but i didn't want to wait until each week to put out one video if i can pop out two or three videos a week i want to do that here i'm just going in and taking a shine off her natural nails she did just do a soak off um so that's why her nails look like this but we're going to take care of that just by going in and taking off the shine and then off camera i do go in and clip her natural nail down just to give it a more clean look here i'm going in with my kds glue her nails do round off on the side so you will see me pinch this tip here no worries we're going for a stiletto shape anyway that's not going to be noticeable and i do go in with the uh glue spray so the tips that i'm using today are the eden tips i love these tips i've actually found them wholesale i just haven't found the time to order any i'm constantly doing things but i'm definitely going to get some because i use these a lot and i like these tips because you can stack them and make them your own length without them looking real wonky so i'm just going in like i said making sure i apply the tip to sidewall to sidewall this week in school is really interesting i'll try not to do a bunch of voiceovers if i can play what's going on in the background i will but i do try to be courteous and not get personal conversation um, or things that are really important inside my videos but here i'm just going in with a pair of sharp nail scissors and cutting the nail into the uh, v shape that's what's going to give me that stiletto shape this is pretty easy to do you just want to start out and cut like you're slicing a pie or making a v you want to start out where the number is in the middle of the nail and slice each side be careful um you take your time when you're doing this you don't want to cut your client but i love doing this method here um it's easy stiletto tips so if you don't have any stiletto tips and you do just have square nails you can go in and do this here i'm going in with a 100 100 grit file it does look like i'm being rough but i'm really not it's because this portion is sped up a little bit but I'm just going in and perfecting that's the little shape that I want and then I do take the file and go up on top of the nail not her natural nail but the artificial nail and blend in the sides a little bit more you want to make sure you do that just because when you go in with your acrylic application you will see like a lump where the acrylic nail meets the natural nail so that's all I'm doing here is just shaping it up I think the shape came out cute so we'll go on to the next step Here, I'm just dehydrating the nail with some alcohol. I'm double priming with um, Young Nails Protein Bond. Getting the nail ready. This does expand so you don't have to go all the way up on the nail like I'm doing. I was like really distracted talking. But yeah, you want to make sure you get that down and let it dry a little bit in between each coat. Here, I just went in with a really, really thin layer of clear acrylic and I'm laying down a purple glitter. This glitter here is a glitter that I made. I still have to get up video two and three of my custom acrylics that I made and show you guys. But key here, this is something that I learned. When you go in to do an ombre over glitter, you want to make sure you are laying down a thin layer over top of the clear. Doing this will allow the cover powder that you are ombre with or whatever powder you're ombre with, like here for instance, just to smoothly lay over the glitter instead of it seeping down in the cracks of the glitter. If we didn't have the clear glitter there, you would see like bumps and ridges where the um, tan powder here, the cover powder seeped in between the acrylic. I hope that I explained that right, but I do repeat this self, this step here several times um you see me here just draining out a little bit of liquid because i'm trying not to flood her cuticle um this is essential when you are working near the cuticle area i'm still like perfecting myself as a professional so 
when you watch my videos, you will see some hiccups, but just know that I'm always learning. So after I do lay everything down, I do go over it with a small clear bead of clear again, because we want to protect that ombre when it is time for filing. Same step here. I'm repeating, going in with a very little bit of clear. The purpose of me putting down the clear first is just to make sure that the glitter acrylic adheres to the nail better. So this acrylic, this acrylic here is one that I actually got wholesale. Um, this is a beautiful cranberry color acrylic, and I'm sealing it in just as I told you guys before with a little bit of clear so that when I go in with my cover powder, it just blends like butter. So when you're working in the cuticle area, I suggest, and this is trial and error with anyone who is just starting out. Try not to put your cuticle bead right at the cuticle area because it is going to move a little bit. Come a little bit forward towards yourself and push back gently and you'll get a better application. I had no idea what I was doing, but she let me freestyle. So this is what I came up with. This yellow color is another one that I got wholesale. Really pretty um, acrylic powder. I'm just working it down, making sure I'm cleaning up my side walls because I really don't want to change the shape of my nail and I really don't want to do a lot of filing. So here at some point you guys will see product run into her um, cuticle areas and the side of her nails, but it is, it is essential that you go right in and clean that off as soon as you see it because we all know once acrylic dry, it is hard to clean it up and it's more time on the back end of filing that I really don't have. So that's what you see me doing here, just making sure I'm constantly checking the side walls and making sure everything is completely clear. So I wanted to do a little something different on this nail. So I went in and I just added every glitter acrylic that I used thus far to this one nail. I wish I would have did another one, but this just popped in my mind like, huh, let's do something different. Um, so I went in with the purple, the cranberry, and then the yellow at top at the top again at this point where i'm putting the yellow at you want to make sure you take it a little bit behind where the natural nail is just so that it looks more appeasing to the eye and good once you put the ombre on i still wouldn't be able to see the yellow so i'm placing that cover acrylic bead slightly behind where the um, nail tip meet the natural nail and then i'm just going in and cleaning up the sides here really really pretty i like the way these came out freestyles can be really really challenging um so i suggest if you book a client for a freestyle you at least ask them what color they want that way before your appointment arrive you can get everything situated and just figure out in, in your head what you want to do if they say they want an all pink look or green and purple look go through your supplies and get all that situated so that you have everything handy and you got an idea of what you want to do. You don't want to pause in between each nail and try to figure out what you want to do. So here I'm going in with the same method, just using a different color glitter. For some reason, thumbs have been my favorite to do. So I'm just repeating that process we did on every one of the other nails and yeah so this week in school i just wanted to say like we're really focusing on sanitation um and the different uh, protocols that are required for nail techs it's just mind bottling the things that you don't know when you teach yourself nails at home and you do nails i mean we know how to basically clean our nail station but it's just so many misinformation put out there that you learn on like Instagram or Facebook from self-taught nail techs, including myself. And then when you go to school, you're like, oh, that's not how you do that. Oh, that's not what you're supposed to do. So I do recommend like if you have the money and you have the time that you invest in your craft and actually go to school and get licensed. If you can't afford it, then do what you're doing. School is not for everyone. But I'm glad that I chose to go to school and actually learn the ins and out of the craft because, like I said, when you're invested in something, you want to make sure you take it serious and you, you are your best at it. Here I'm going in with a medium um, grit 
a safety bit and I'm just cleaning up the cuticle area and going over her nail naturally just taking down anything that is not even I think my application was pretty smooth so I really didn't have to do much filing on top of the nail so that's what you guys see me doing here just cleaning up her cuticle area making sure I seal it so that she doesn't have any lifting and then I do go in with a sanding band and just go over the nail we're just smoothing everything out we're getting ready for our final steps in the nail i do get a lot of questions about what school i go to and what's the requirements i promise i will have a video up this week answering all those questions maybe i'll do it like a q a or maybe i'll do it while i'm at the school i'm not sure but i'll definitely get it up if you have messaged me privately i have responded um, with all the information, I am not a gatekeeper. If I know something, I don't try to hide it from myself. I want everyone to win. If you are a nail tech and you want to get licensed and I am your access point to finding out information, then I'm happy to help you. I do not hold information. So if you comment down below asking me anything, I try to reply. Or if you've messaged me privately, I have replied. And if I haven't yet, give me a second. Um, I get a lot of messages and DMs since I've started school about the school. I will let you guys know all that information. Only thing I do ask is if you find out you want to go to the school that I go to and you do sign up, that you do let them know um, that you found them on my video. They know me by shy. Um, there's no secrets here. I do get a $50 um, referral if you do sign up for the school. So I'll do a dedicated video. It is by far a, a bomb experience. I suggest when I do the video, if you're really serious about it, that you go ahead and check them out. It's a pleasant time. It's a great experience. The environment is just like you're at home and you're just doing what you love. So I'll get more into that when we um, do that video. I'll have that video up, I promise, this week. So here I'm just going in with my buffer, buffing the nail up, making sure um, the sides and everything. I, I buff the sides of my nails. I want to make sure nothing is rough there because we do go in and file after acrylic application. So that's all you see me doing here. Here I'm just going in with some clear um, gel top coat. This is the Born Pretty gel top coat. I will leave it linked down below. And big thing here is you can flood your cuticle area with gel polish. This was a huge mistake I used to make. So make sure you have your client's finger pointing down so that the product drags forward. And if you do see that you flood the cuticle with the gel polish, just keep some alcohol next to you with this little thin synthetic brush and go around the cuticle area and clean it up before you cure it in the lamp. Here I'm going in with... Um, rhinestone glue that I'm trying out. Love it. Can't wait to show, show you guys what it is. And then I just want to say this. I know a lot of people like to put their stones down before they go on and out with the gel top coat. This glue is so good. You don't have to do that. You can literally go in and add your top coat and then add your stones. I don't personally like to add my stones first i think sometimes the gel top coat can get on your stones and have it look a little clustery or like not not cute so trust me you're gonna love this rhinestone glue when i finally do show it to you guys but here again this was not planned i was like let me go in and freestyle we have so many nail supplies and i find out that i hear a lot of nail techs say they're buying a bunch of stuff as a beginner nail tech and they're not using it don't let your product sit. Even if you have to use it on yourself, use it on yourself because there's going to be that one client that walked through your door that want that product that you've had sitting there for a year or two, but you don't know how to work it because it's just been sitting there. So buy your products and use them. If you see something and you're like, oh, I'm never going to use this and it's on sale and you want it or whatever, pick it up. You're going to use it. Someone's going to want it and you want to be able to have it. You don't want to lose that client because you don't have a certain type of nail art or a certain type of color acrylic or gel polish so here like i said i'm just repeating that last step this is the thumb um i don't know why a lot of people neglect to put like designs and rhinestones on the thumb but i don't play that even if i have to put one in the center i like to throw something on the thumb so that's all you guys see me doing here if you find my videos helpful if you want to follow my journey 
as a nail tech. I do other videos. Don't forget to subscribe. You can comment down below. Let me know what you think of this video. If you've been following me for a while, let me know what you think of my nail journey. I like to hear from you guys. I like to talk to you. I really like how this look came out. It's really pretty and different. Um, so lastly, I just go in with some cuticle oil just to give her that fresh look. Just a FYI tip. You want to make sure you're using a dropper. And if it is a brush, it's the cuticle brush that belongs to the client. You don't want any germs or contamination going on. And this is the final look. Don't forget to subscribe. I do appreciate y'all. Sound off down below. Let me know what you think. Bye.